On weekends, bartenders are some of the busiest people in town, serving hundreds of customers in a single night. Tips are the backbone of the service industry. Let's explore some ways to make you more. Keep the bar clean. When your bar area is covered with spilled drinks, dirty glasses, and abandoned food, it creates an unpleasant atmosphere for the customer. Making sure that your area is clean and presentable will improve the experience for your drinkers, which will likely lead to more tips. Make customers feel like regulars. Bartenders see hundreds of unique faces. It's practically impossible to remember everyone. Regardless, another way to earn more tips is to make everyone feel like a regular. Smile at them when you see them approach the bar. If you have time, make small talk. Ask them how they've been, give compliments, and be charming. Small things like this go a long way in making the customer feel connected and comfortable. Enjoy yourself. Confident bartenders make more tips because their energy is contagious. Bartenders can create a positive atmosphere by joking around with customers, smiling, and having fun. If you can make customers laugh, they'll be much more inclined to leave you more of a tip than if you simply brought them a drink and moved on to the next customer. Don't be afraid to be yourself and let loose. It may even make your shift go by faster. Be professional. At the end of the day, you're behind the bar to do a job. It's important to keep a balance between having fun and working hard. Make sure you're making drinks correctly and in a timely manner. If a customer is almost done with their drinks, offer a refill. Offer recommendations to customers not sure what to order or offer free samples to help them decide. That wraps up our advice for making more tips as a bartender. Welcome back to Drinks Made Easy, because cocktails don't have to be difficult. Today we're looking at a comparison between the stirred and the shaken Manhattan. Now a lot of people have some strong opinions on this, but I don't think most people have ever tried them side by side, especially when using a large format ice cube for the shaken variety. Now I have my own opinions, we're going to do them side by side, and at the end Mike is going to do a taste comparison. So stick around and let us know what you think. Without any further ado, let's make some cocktails. To build the Manhattan, you'll start with two dashes of Angostura bitters. Next, you'll add one ounce of sweet vermouth, which I will do to each, and two ounces of rye. Now, here on my right, basically, if, just giving it a quick stir, you, if you built this in just a uh, regular double rocks or a bucket glass, you would have a Manhattan on the rocks, which is quite popular and one of my preferred ways. But that's not what we're comparing today. So. Put our Manhattan ingredients into a shaker tin with one large format cube, and we're going to give this a good shake. And now we're going to pour our two different styles of making Manhattans into our martini glasses, and our resident expert tester, Mike, is going to give his opinion on which he prefers. Do you want your garnish, Mike? Yeah, garnish first. Garnish with a Luxardo cherry. Which one's which? Do you want me to let you know or do you want to just try? Yeah, let's just try. Yeah, let's do a little taste test, a little blind taste test. I think I know which this one is. I would take that one. To me, I can taste more of the vermouth and the whiskey in this because there's less mm. water. Mm. I think the biggest difference being, I mean, this is uh, actually a little bit warmer also, which yeah. is going to lead to more flavor. That one's definitely colder for sure. This one's colder. And, and that one has more, more dilution. But Correct. The biggest difference, absolutely, though, was the fact that I used a large format cube when I shook this. If I'd used the same size ice and shook it for the same amount of time, this would be the one that would be overly diluted by comparison. I still like that one. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's because there's um, it's less water and more of the yeah. vermouth and stuff is playing together yep. with it. Yep. That's it. I like that one. Yep. Well, there you go. I mean, at the end of the day, it's food. So the different variations on this of temperature and dilution are going to change up your flavor of the Manhattan. We used 100 proof rye in this. And uh, it's just to go to show that there isn't really just one right way to make a cocktail. Again, I think the reason why people poo poo shake in Manhattan so much is because in the past you'd be using smaller ice and you'd have really heavy dilution. That being said, if you have rapid dilution from using that smaller ice, you're getting kind of the same result as if you had had your Manhattan on the rocks and just let it sit there for a while and dilute down. So if that's your preferred way, getting it shaken 
with that dilution just gets you to your flavor preference more quickly. My personal opinion is drink it the way that you like to drink it. And if people say there's only one way to make something, they either don't know what they're talking about or they're an asshole. You said the air one. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or conundrums about what we have done today, go ahead and uh, leave them in the comments below and we will do our best to respond kindly as long as the comments are kind. Cheers. Welcome back to Drinks Made Easy, because cocktails don't have to be difficult. Today we're taking a look at the Fitzgerald, a drink that Dale DeGroff, one of the forerunners of the modern craft cocktail movement, introduced at the Rainbow Room in the 90s. Now this is a really simple cocktail, it's basically a lemon daiquiri using gin instead of rum, or just your gin sour with no egg whites and just a little bit of bitters. These old school cocktails are some of my favorites because they only have a couple of really straightforward ingredients, which leads to a really straightforward delightful cocktail. If you haven't already, please go ahead and click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I release a new video. And without any further ado, let's make a cocktail. To build the Fitzgerald, we'll start with two dashes of Angostura bitters. Next, we'll add one and a half ounces of gin. Just using a regular London dry gin here. If you use something that's really light, especially when you're adding citrus, it can tend to get just lost. So do recommend using a nice strong flavored gin. Three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice and one ounce of simple syrup. Cap that off to a shaker tin full of ice and give it a quick shake. Strain into the coupe or cocktail glass of your choice. And now this cocktail originally uh, calls for being placed in a rocks glass, but just like any drink, uh, if you want to change the, uh, the presentation of it, or if you tend to prefer your drink to not get further diluted, just go ahead and put it in a coupe like we're doing today. And then we're just going to garnish with a nice little slice of lemon. And easy as that, you have the Fitzgerald. The Fitzgerald is just basically a classic gin sour. Now, especially if you like lemon more than lime, this is a great alternative to sort of your variations on a daiquiri. Uh, so if you got a lot of lemons, make some of these. If you got a lot of limes, make a daiquiri. Cheers and drinks made easy. To build a poison apple cocktail, you start with one ounce of vanilla vodka. Next, you'll add one ounce of sour apple pucker or any sour apple of your choice, half an ounce of Midori, and half an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Cap that off into a shaker tin of ice and give it a good shake. Strain it into the glass of your choice. And we're gonna lengthen it with just a little bit of 7-Up, or you can also use Sprite. Now make sure that you leave a little bit of room because we're gonna add a little bit of dry ice, and if you don't leave any room, it's gonna bubble all over the place. And there you have the Poison Apple Cocktail. Please make sure not to drink this drink while there still is dry ice in it, as that is incredibly dangerous and you can injure yourself. And please remember to always drink responsibly because everybody likes to make friends, but no one likes to make them in a prison shower. We're gonna need to do another one of that. That was perfect. No, it wasn't. And easy as that, you have the Black Magic Cocktail. What is that? That's a really aggressive knock. Hey, cool costume, costume parties down the hall. We got stuff to do. Alright, what are we on to now? That looks like a...
Oh, God, there it is. Okay. All right, welcome to uh, Drinks Made Easy. And uh, let's all look at this. They're doing a Halloween drink. It's cute. It's like alcohol, but scary. So, uh, you know what? Yeah, we can do this one. It's called the Bloody Orange. First, oh my god, mixing with a dying body is not easy. An ounce of vodka. And we're gonna do a half ounce, come here, of liquor 43. And finally, two ounces of Orangina, or as we called it back home, the fancy orange juice. If you don't have that, just do an ounce of orange juice and then three ounces of club soda, or one part orange juice, three parts club soda. <clears throat> and then stir. And then, to top it off, for you blood bags, three quarters ounce raspberry syrup. Oh, isn't that just frightening? Mmm. Mm hmm. Oh, you're not a zombie. Give me that. Oh, God! Oh,